Hey, what's up guys? Kyle Moore here for DJ Tech Tools. Welcome to my workstation. And today we're going to teach you how to make your very own MIDI controller with just a few hours of your spare time and under $100. So let's get started. All right, now before we get started, we're going to need a few things. Okay, I lied. We're going to need a lot of things. So let's look at our shopping list. Parts. Now first you're going to need a Teensy 2.0 board, a Teensy to USB adapter which is a USB to mini B cable, jumper wires, fader mounting screws, M2 0.4 6mm, 5mm LEDs, 220 ohm 1 4th watt 1% metal film resistors for those LEDs, 24mm SAMA arcade buttons, DJ Tech Tools chroma caps, potentiometers, and faders, also known as linear potentiometers. Next, let's look at the tools we're going to need. First, you'll need a soldering iron. It doesn't need to be anything expensive. Some rosin core solder and soldering flux. A drill, some hobby files, a drill bit set. 24 millimeter or a one inch spade bit or a spade bit set. Liquid electrical tape, electrical tape, or heat shrink tubing. We'll also need some Gorilla Glue for mounting our LED some wire cutters, a plier set for some needle nose pliers and a little bit bigger sizes, a small screwdriver set, a hot glue gun, some hot glue, a mini hacksaw, a box cutter, a dremel with wood cutting bits, and some sandpaper. We'll also need some rubber feet for holding our enclosure in place. Next, let's look at some enclosures. You can use anything from an old VHS to some video game cartridges, but for our purposes, we're going to use a small, cheap wooden box from our local craft store. Now, if you're doing a wood enclosure, there's some really cool finishes that you can do by just using some basic stain, pre-stain, just to make sure that your stain evens out, polyurethane, and you also need some rags, gloves, and paintbrushes. All right, let's talk about drilling our enclosure. First, you'll need some sort of schematic, drawing, sketch, anything, just to really get an idea of where you want to put all of your components. Now for our instance, it's some really soft wood, so we can just use a nail to uh, puncture the soft wood and make indentations of where we want to put our buttons and knobs. All right, now for drilling the holes for our potentiometers, you're going to need a few different drill bit sizes. Start small and then go big. We're going to end with a 5 16 bit, but the smaller it gives you a nice pilot hole so you don't crack the enclosure. Next we'll use the spade bit to cut holes for our arcade buttons. Now my original schematic was for 8 arcade buttons, but I decided to do 4 potentiometers. You're also going to need to drill a hole for your LED. I'd like to use the chart that I have listed in the description below for a 5mm LED to only show the tip, we're going to use a 3 16 bit. And that fits nicely in there, and if we need to use the hobby files to make sure it's not that snug, we'll use those as well. Now, for indicating your fader slots, it's a good idea since this is a cheap piece of wood that we can actually take a box cutter to it and score the lines. But first we'll be taking a nail just to show where the travel of the uh, fader actually starts and ends, and then we'll use the box cutter to score the lines. Next we'll be cutting the slots into the enclosure for the linear potentiometers known as faders. Now you can try to do this with a hacksaw and some files, it will take forever. So I found this to be the most effective, the cleanest, and the most precise tool for the job. Now as you can see, the back and the inside of the enclosure will always look crappy. You can clean it up as much as possible, but luckily no one will see that side. Now you can also take the mini hacksaw in there and really clean up the inside. You'll have some jagged pieces of wood and you want to make sure that you really have a nice space for your fader to travel. Now you can also use the hobby files to clean up the back, make sure you don't have any loose pieces of wood hanging over. Now your enclosure, if you bought a wood box like this, is going to come with some type of mounting screws and hinges, so you're going to want to remove those before you think about staining it. Next, we have the adapter, which is the USB to Mini-B. This makes it so that we can use our chroma cables or our regular MIDI cables with the Teensy boards. Now, in order to do this, I just took a marker. I marked where the edge of the adapter would be, 
and where the mounting screw holes should be. And then I took the mini hacksaw to it. Since it's pretty soft wood, this didn't take much effort. I just used the hacksaw on the left and right side and then the bottom, but most of it was actually done with a box cutter. Now, it's time for instant gratification with some stain. First, take a rag, wipe on all the stain. You can put it on, pull it off, or just leave it to sit if you want a darker shade. Then add some polyurethane after it's dried for 24 hours and apply as necessary. You can do a few coats. Then let it dry for about 72 hours before you start putting some components in. Next, let's mount our components into the enclosure now that it's dried. First, we'll snap in the arcade buttons, or some of these actually have a ring on the bottom that will help you screw on to mount them. Then we're gonna insert our D-shaft potentiometers. These you just simply pop in the hole. If you have any type of resistance, don't try to force it. Just use the hobby files to clean the hole. And then add the washers and the nuts, and you should be able to tighten them pretty quickly. You can also use a set of pliers to make sure they're snug on there, and then pop on your chroma caps. If you use polyurethane, you may have to clean up the case a little bit with a box cutter. Now let's insert the LED into our enclosure. We'll be using some Gorilla Glue to mount it. You can also use regular glue, super glue, but I recommend not using hot glue as it will melt the LED. Now let's mount our linear potentiometers, also known as faders. As you can see here, we've got the power, the active signal, and the ground labeled. We'll insert those. I actually had to use some materials since they didn't come with dust covers. I hot glued that to the case. Then we're gonna pop on our chroma caps and mount the faders with the M2 screws. Then we add some rubber feet to the bottom of the enclosure. This just helps it so it doesn't move around. Now let's get ready to make some connections and solder. Now before we start soldering, it's a good idea to prep your jumper wires. While they're already prepped a little bit more than most wire, I tend to bend them on a 90 degree angle and cut about one fourth of the length off. This just helps you to make a quick solder and be done and it also helps to fit in any enclosure. If you've got plenty of space, you can leave them straight. Now, get our solder and our flux out. I tend to use a toothpick with the flux because this helps me really just to put it in the exact spot I need it. Pens tend to get messy and all over the place. A quick, easy way to solder is just put a glob of solder on the end of your iron and then just tap it to the flux and it should evenly spread out. Here you can see we're hooking the resistor onto the positive side of the LED, which will attach to the power and since we're using heat shrink tubing in this example and we don't have a heat gun, we're actually using the iron to heat up the heat shrink tubing. We'll then snip off the excess of the resistor wire and solder it to another wire. We'll also hook up the ground wire. The ground wire is usually the shorter of the two. Now, because there's only one pin on the Teensy board, we'll be chaining all of our ground wires from every component and we're going to start with the potentiometers. Now with the potentiometers, when you have them mounted inside the case, it is the farthest right pin. Now we'll chain all of them together and then we'll move on to the faders. For the faders, the ground is the bottom left. The ground is the number three pin on your linear potentiometers. Next, we have the arcade buttons. Putting the ground in the arcade buttons is simple. It's any pin you want, there's two. One is your active line out and the other is your ground. Now that we're done with the ground wires, let's move on to our active signal line. For the potentiometers, it's the second in line right next to the ground. For the faders, it's the number two pin and for the arcade button, it's the other pin that you have that's not the ground. Next, we'll be using liquid electrical tape. This stuff is great for tight areas. It takes a few minutes to dry it is also super toxic, so make sure you have a fan blowing or the window open. After that's dried, we will move on to make sure no connections are touching. And next, we're going to hook up our power. Now, the last pin in the line on the potentiometers is the power line. We'll chain all of those together, and then we'll move on to the faders, which the number one pin is your power pin. And then the buttons actually don't require power because it's just closing your circuit. All right, now before we get started connecting anything to our Teensy board, we're going to need to program it. 
Now, this is because it has built-in resistors that can be pulled down with code, so we don't need any physical resistors with our arcade buttons. Now, before we get started programming, we're going to need three pieces of software. First, we'll need the Arduino software, which allows you to upload sketches to your Teensy board. Also, be sure to check previous releases, as sometimes the Teensy software is only compatible with older versions of the Arduino software. Next, we'll need to download the Teensy Duino and sometimes the certain versions of this, like I said, are only compatible with older versions of the Arduino software, so be sure to check the compatibility when you're on this page. It'll make sure to tell you the most recent version that you can use with both softwares. Now this page will show you step-by-step -step exactly how to install the Teensy extension into your Arduino software and even how to upload it. Next, you'll need the Teensy bootloader. You can select which operating system you have and install that. This will allow you to upload the sketch. Then we'll install the Teensy Duino software. This is basically a plugin for the Arduino software. Next, we'll open up our DMG file of the Teensy bootloader. Now we'll leave that in the corner while we're going to set up our programming. Now we'll open the Arduino software that we've installed. Now, if you look at the code here, this is the code that we're going to put on our board that was also included in the download below. Make sure that you set your TT 2.0 as your device and select MIDI. Now, this is your number of analog inputs. Make sure that you change that accordingly. So we are using eight. Then you can scroll down and this is the number of buttons we have. We're saying zero through three instead of one through four. And if you look through the code, there's multiple instances for the buttons that are showing you exactly what they do. And just make sure that this is always zero of three, one of three, two of three, three of three. And if you add more, uh, follow that pattern. So it would be zero of whatever your total number of buttons is. Next, we'll push this right arrow to upload the sketch. Sometimes you'll get this error message and it's basically saying that you need to hold down the button on the Teensy to restart it. And when that happens, it'll upload the sketch. Then you can do it again just to make sure it uploads properly. It'll say it rebooted okay. You'll see at the bottom of the bootloader that it will actually say the name of your sketch. Then head on over to your DAW. We're using Ableton. And you can see that it says Teensy MIDI and it's recognizing it as a MIDI controller. Then you'll check your MIDI signal and you'll see it flashing in the corner. Now let's map the controller. Hit a few buttons, select on some stuff, and now you will see that we are sending MIDI signals to Ableton. Your controller is functioning properly. It's time to solder all of the components to the Teensy board. First, you wanna take your power and your ground lines that are chained from all of your components and run them to the Teensy board. One is on each side of the board and they're labeled accordingly. GND for ground and VCC for your power. Underneath your VCC is all of your analog inputs. It starts at F0 and goes down the board. On the other side, underneath the ground is all of your digital inputs. This is where you will put all of your buttons. Please note, your faders are linear potentiometers, which means they're treated the same as your potentiometers and they are analog signals so that you will code them and solder them just like their knobs. Thanks for hanging out guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your very own MIDI controller. Be sure to check out the DJ Tech Tools forum because there's already a lot of great discussion on how to do very similar projects to this and ones even better with a lot of great support. So check that out and we will see you soon. Take care.